Let me introduce Dr. Bethany Elman for her testimony. Thank you, Chairman Byer, Ranking Member Babin, members of the subcommittee. I appreciate all of your work to support science and exploration, and, and thank you for the opportunity to appear today. Our, our team was thrilled February 18th when JPL delivered our one-ton rover to the surface of Mars. I'm going to focus on the big picture science questions answerable at Mars and the, how we conduct our exploration, while my colleagues will discuss the instruments and sample return portions. For me, and I think for many of us, there is just a DNA of exploration uh, in us as, as humans. We're drawn to ask profound questions. Are, are planets like our Earth rare or are they common? Is there life elsewhere in the universe? One of the reasons I study Mars among all solar system planets is that Mars is a linchpin to answering these questions. The different fates of our Earth-like of Earth-like worlds in our solar system are recorded on Earth, Venus, and Mars. But what's special about Mars is that there's a vast rock record that spans the interactions of the interior of the planet, the atmosphere, the climate, that record what makes a planet habitable over its first billion years. I draw the subcommittee's attention to the Mars Architecture Strategy Working Group report from November that goes far more deeply than I can in five minutes on these questions, reviewing the findings of our program, reaffirming the priority of sample return, and identifying how to move forward in the next decade about the interaction between science, ex scientific exploration, human exploration, and the growing commercial space sector. Because as was mentioned, it's an exciting time right now at Mars, 11 operating spacecraft from five different agencies. So what does Perseverance do? Perseverance is both a science mission like past rovers, and it's the first step in an ambitious three mission sequence to return samples to Earth. We've already accomplished a number of our technology goals, but what remains is to study the region's history, climate, look for signs of life. We act as a robot geologist, but I, I now want to move to my uh, slides that I have because we have a wealth of data from the Mars Exploration Program. And if we go ahead and move on to the first time step, I can talk about uh, why this is important and what we have learned and what we will learn. What I'm showing here is a hillshade topography uh, map of, of, of Mars because Mars today is a cold, dry desert like the Antarctic Dry Valleys. Two decades of exploration, though, have discovered thousands of outcrops of rock across the surface. Everywhere you see a colored dot on this image, it's a mineral that formed in the presence of water. Some clay minerals like you form it in soils, uh, some from aquifers underground, some salts. Now, there are thousands of places to explore, but we, we have gotten to a handful of them so far. You can see the Perseverance rover site is in a concentration of these exciting rock outcrops west of the Isidus Basin. If we zoom in to where we have chosen to go with this Mars 2020 rover on the next slide, what we see here is a beautiful 45 kilometer Jezero crater. Uh, I hope if you look to the, particularly to the left of Jezero Crater, what's exciting is that there uh, is, is a landscape of four billion year old rocks, uh, particularly in the lower left, you can see a series of rock mesas and outcrops planing off the historical record of Mars conveniently for us to drive through. And indeed the white dot is where we are right now on Mars. The, the white line is a notional traverse that we hope to undertake over the next two years. In Jezero Crater, you can see it's a bit special. Um, over to the east, there's an outflow channel. That's where water once drained out. To the north and to the west, there's an inflow channel that once drained in. And this is where Jezero Crater once had a lake. If we zoom in to the west, you can see this beautiful uh, delta landform. Here I'm showing false color infrared data from one of the orbiters, uh, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter in our exploration program. The yellows and the purples are volcanic formed minerals. The greens are clay and carbonate. Clay and carbonate rocks, water formed. If you were on Earth, you would go to them to find the fossils. If we go to the next slide, it highlights, you know, just the amazing Mars X coordinated exploration program, snapping our descent to the surface with the high rise instrument, seeing Perseverance land at this landform that we worked for 20 years to find as the target of our exploration. I'll end 
with the final graphic, which is hot off the presses uh, from the mast Cam Z instrument, and really I hope reveals the tantalizing detail of of what's to come. You can see the sands and the rocks of our our landing site, the distant crater rim. 10 kilometers away that we will eventually climb out on, but not before exploring these uh, sediments and deposits ahead of us. So it's a rubbly landscape and we've got to just make the first decisions about how to drive through it. But as we finish off here, you see the mesas of the Delta coming into view, those rocks that record the history of the lake. We're going to drive up to them with our instruments, sample them to select uh, the best ones to bring back to Earth. So I look forward to reporting on our findings in the years to come. Dr. Elman, thank you very much. It, 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 this looks like mountains I would like to climb. Uh, Dr. Beagle, the floor is yours. <clears throat> Chairman Byer, Ranking Member Badman, and members of the subcommittee, I'm honored to appear before this subcommittee 